Hello everyone, I'm Frances and I work for Somerset Libraries. I have another tongue twister for you. Today I'm going to tell you about the letter G. A big G is very round, like a big O with a gateway. Can you make a G shape? It is used for the names of people and places because they're important. Some of the names in today's story start with a big G. Gabriella, Graham, Gladys, Gary, Gertie, Grace, Gwen, Greta, Glenis, Gloria, Gussie, Grant, Gareth, Gilbert, Gonzales, Gasper, Gavin, Gregory, Gordon, Galileo. I'm sure there's someone you know whose name starts with a big G. Or you might have heard the names of these places. Glastonbury, Goldsoncott, Gordano, Gloucester, Gateshead, Gatwick. That's where the airport is near London. Great Yarmouth, Guernsey, Ghana or Greece. They're all important and they all start with a big G. For ordinary words, you use a little g and it usually says G. It has a round body and a long tail. Some ordinary words which start with a G are garden, goose. I've been looking for some geese. I found some things, but I'm not sure if they're really ducks or maybe even a swan or a goose. A goose has a long neck and stands up quite tall. And then I've got another one here. I think that's probably a duck, but it looks a bit like a goose. And I've got a cup and that's got some ducks and birds on it. Um, some other words are gate, gold. I've been looking for some golden things. I've got some golden paper, a golden candle holder, some golden sticky tape and some golden honey. And another word is gargle. Sometimes if you have a sore throat, you might have a gargle with some honey and lemon and it soothes your throat and makes you feel a bit better and a g sound is made right back in your mouth can you say g well today we're going to meet a woman called gabriella a man called graham a goose called gladys this is gladys a gander called gary and lots of goslings. Goslings are young geese and you might notice that all their names start with, can you guess, a big G. Today's story is called Gladys the Goose and the Golden Gates. It was a glorious day and the golden sun was gleaming off the shiny windows of Graham and Gabriella's little house. Graham and Gabriella Gossage had a lovely garden with beautiful green grass and a little Greek statue in the middle. At the bottom of the garden, they had some old apple trees and two fully grown geese called Gladys and Gary. Gladys the goose and Gary the gander had lots of young goslings called Gertrude, Gilbert, Gloria, Gregory, Gwendolyn, Gasper, Giddy, Gangly and Gonzales.
Graham and Gabriella Gossage were very good at growing things and they had a greenhouse where Graham grew gherkins, garlic, grapes and lots of other things. Gabriella loved making gazpacho soup, gherkin, grapefruit and green mango pickle and garlic bread. Mm. They had a garage too. The garage was not as tidy as the garden. In fact, it was full of gumboots, golf sticks, grey toolboxes, part of an old grand piano, unwanted gifts, Uncle Gordon's greatcoat, the ancient gas fire, Uncle Gareth's gaiters, which were full of gaping holes, pots of glue, Aunt Gussie's galoshes, an antique gong, some old board games and some treasures from Ghana where Gabriella had grown up. Graham and Gabriella Gossage had some gates which had always been old and rusty with the paint peeling off them. At last Graham was trying to smarten them up. Gabriella loved bright clothes and gold bangles and she really wanted golden gates. Graham said tactfully that golden gates would be far too grand for their little house, but he offered to paint them black with gold tops and Gabriella was delighted. Graham was halfway through the painting when Gabriella called him for a tea break. The gates were already looking gorgeous. He shut the front doors of the garage carefully, but he left the little back door into the garden open to let some fresh air in, while he went to have a rest and enjoy a grand slice of Gabriella's ginger cake. Gladys the goose also wanted a rest. Looking after all her young goslings was very hard work. Gertrude and Gilbert had been having a slug slinging match. Gloria and Gregory looked like pirates with dark patches of sticky slimy mud all round their eyes. Gwendolyn and Gasper were getting all tangled up in some garden string and having a tug of war. Giddy and Gangly were covered in garlands of grimy pondweed and they were doing a sort of African dance. And as for Gonzales, well, he had a lot of gumption and had obviously gone galumphing off somewhere to gallivant, most likely on a wild goose chase. While Gary the Gander was having a quiet snooze behind the gladioli where he thought Gladys couldn't see him. Gladys glided up to the gate, lifted the latch with her beak and slipped out without anyone noticing. She walked sedately across the lawn, grazing as she went, and she saw that the little garage door was open. She went in gracefully to say hello to Graham. He wasn't there but she admired the smart black gate and she was just having a look round amongst the garbage when a sudden gust of air blew the little garage door shut. 
Poor Gladys was stuck in the garage. She wandered round for a bit and then she began to feel a bit uncomfortable. She wanted to go back to her cosy dry nest and lay an egg, but she couldn't. Poor Gladys was in quite a predicament. It was quite dark in the garage with the doors shut, but earlier Gladys had spotted something round which she thought she could manage to sit on if she was careful. It seemed quite solid. She managed to, sit, to make herself comfortable and with relief she laid a lovely goose egg. It seemed to make a little splash and land safely. She had a little rest and then she heard Graham coming. And anyway, it was time to go and sort out the goslings. She lifted herself gently up and off she went to meet Graham. Graham was very surprised to see her and even more amazed when she turned round because the feathers round her tail looked as if the hairdresser had given them blonde highlights or a golden rinse. He called Gabriella and they both grinned at the funny sight. Luckily, the paint on the garden gate was still perfect. And Graham gently sent Gladys back to have a swim in the pond and show her new hairdo to the goslings. She was sure Gary wouldn't even notice. It wasn't until Gary, it wasn't until Gary dipped his paintbrush into the pot of golden paint that he realised what had happened. A golden goose egg was nestling in the paint pot. He and Gabriella guffawed with laughter. Gladys was the goose that laid the golden egg. Then Gabriella had an ingenious idea. As a tribute to Gladys, they could have golden eggs instead of golden spikes on top of the gate. So they could put golden eggs on top of the spikes like that. They looked very smart and unusual. Everyone admired them and visitors always went to say hello to Gladys. She became quite a celebrity. Graham and Gabriella Gossage never forgot Gladys the Graceful Goose who inspired their golden egg gates. Well, goodness gracious me, the Gossages never forgot Gladys, the graceful goose who inspired their golden egg gates. That's quite difficult to say. I wonder if you can say it. The Gossages never forgot Gladys, the graceful goose who inspired their golden egg gates. Can you say it as if you were surprised like Graham? The Gossages never forgot Gladys, the graceful goose who inspired their golden egg gates. How about if you were very pleased with the golden eggs on your gates, like Gabriella? The Gossages never forgot Gladys, the graceful goose who inspired their golden egg gates. Or as if you didn't quite believe it, like a neighbour who saw the gates. The Gossages never forgot Gladys, the graceful goose, who inspired their golden egg gates. Or as if you were an excited gosling, telling your friends about it in the middle of a tug of war or a slug slinging competition. 
The Gossages never forgot Gladys, the graceful goose who inspired their golden egg gates. Keep practising. Well, I'm going to go and look for some golden eggs. But I don't think I'm going to find any. Are you going on a wild goose chase today? Have fun. I shall have a cup of tea though. Thank you very much for listening. I do hope you enjoyed hearing about Gladys and the Golden Gates. Please join us again soon. Goodbye. We do hope you enjoyed listening today. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and share with friends and family. Thank you. Goodbye.